Hi guys, welcome to Full Time Devils. I'm Adam McCullough, he's Stephen Allison. We are here in the lovely Perth. We finally got to see outside of a bar and outside of a football stadium. Well, it weren't even a football stadium, was it? Uh, yeah, I can see the sky. Uh, this is, I think, the first time I've seen the sky. Mm. You, you, you liking Australia? You liking Perth? Some late nights, lad. It, is, it has been, and they're not going <laughs> to stop because we're going to have many more late nights, enjoying it, living it up with the Reds out here from all over Australia. And all over, Manchester seems the role here as well. Mate, it was a guy who came up to me last night and I'm like, where are you from? He's like, Little Alton. <laughs> <laughs> so many expats over here as well from, from the UK. Um, it's incredible. It's like being at home, no language barrier. It's great stuff and plenty of beer. Do you know what the best bit is? I ain't seen a snake, I ain't seen a spider, and I am well happy with both of those things. We're going to that island on Tuesday though, and that Definitely might turn gonna things up. I'm going to go see the quokkas. Google quokka. No, don't Google them, just wait for our pictures. Oh yeah, wait. Oh, you can wait for the pictures, but definitely Google them though, because they are awesome. Quokka, just Google it, Quokka, Australia. Make sure you spell that right, because you might end up on the wrong website, and you don't want to do that. Anyway, let's get stuck into the football. Obviously, we've got to see United this weekend. Beat Perth Glory, 2-0. Um, we were talking about Axel Twanzebe, we were talking about Mason Greenwood, Angel yep. Gomez, yep. the new signings. Yep. It was a good run out for some of them, innit? Yeah, some of them, yeah. I thought uh, the second half team had more bite about it, uh, which had more flexibility and fluidity in the final third. I thought didn't quite work. I thought he was lacking a little bit of quality with Chong and James. Uh, and I thought that levelled up when you brought on Gomez and, and Greenwood and Rashford. I thought that was uh, that was a hell of a forward three, actually. I thought that worked really well. And one matter, conducting it all. Hagba made a huge difference in the middle oh, as well. Huge. He looks big as well. It looks like he's, he's just been doing deadlifts all summer long, doesn't he? Mm. Um, I thought Scott McTominay looked good. Axel Tuanzebe looked good. Uh, Aaron Wambasaka was outstanding. Um, Is that just because we haven't seen a good right back in a while that we think he was that good? No. <laughs> Yes, but no. Uh, no, I thought he was genuinely good. Some of the, his tackles are like mind-blowingly good. Mind-blowingly good. And he offers, there's such a confidence that you can have that, don't worry about it, on that right-hand side. Who's attacking? He's quicker than most wingers, right? He's quicker than most forwards. So he's getting back and he's making a tackle. He's still not perfect with a ball at his feet. But I think as he gets into, like, I, I think he's going to link up really well with the likes of Marcus eventually. Uh, I think that's going to. I think they play similar sort of football. They like it on the ground. They like little touches around the corner. Um, and I, I think we're going to see some of that. Uh, I, I thought it was fantastic, to be honest with you. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I was gutted Mason didn't get a goal because I thought he really deserved one. And that's carrying on straight from that Cardiff game. He's had two games back to back, really, in the first team where you go. He's done everything right. He's had loads of shots. It's going to come for him and they might come in a hatful when he gets them. That's how you get those, like, when you look at Rashford's start, if those shots don't go in, like, it's a different story for him yeah, and you, Greenwood kind of... seen him. If he didn't score against Midtjylland, does he start against Arsenal and then do you even see him again? That, them's the breaks and you've got to take the chances. You've got to take your chances, you've got to. And obviously we covered some of the, the new signings there, the Wambasaka and Daniel James. I think Daniel James, much like Wambasaka, has to improve with his final ball in the final third, but... Everything else about them are looking pretty confident. As you said earlier, like, Daniel James, and you're tired, 80 minutes, 70 minutes, roasting you. Mate, that's not fair, that, is it? If you're any defender and you bring him on, you go, that's not bad. <laughs> oh. He's little as well, so he's like... So, yeah, he's agile, so you're not going to get anywhere. Like, if you're a six foot two, six foot three defender, 80 minutes in, carrying a knock, someone stood on your foot, like, and then you bring him on, you'd be like, I'm going to launch him. Mm. Like, Therefore, I would I, I would think I could have him and then he'd just nip away from you and it's all over. Talking about new signings, we obviously need a few more new signings. One of them that seems likely to happen this summer, Messi. yes, apart from Messi, is Maguire, oh, yeah. who's the Messi of Leicester, the Messi of defence. Yeah? Any comment on that? No. What we've heard recently, though, is he's told Leicester City and Brendan Rodgers that he's off. This is coming from reports in the UK media. Um, it seems to be everyone's reporting it. So when everyone reports it, you kind of feel that there's a little bit of truth to it. But is Maguire the man for Manchester United's defence? Yeah. Is he worth the money? And do you want to see him coming this summer? Right. Is he worth the money? No, nobody is. But these are the games that you've got to play nowadays. Do I want to see him come this summer? Yeah. I don't want to see us go another window where we don't bring in a centre half that's dominant like them. I wanted to see a captain brought in. I don't think he is a captain guy. I don't think he's going to walk in and demand the armband like a cooler Bali perhaps maybe did. I think they've all been on a list. I think Delict, um, Alderweireld, Cooler Bali, Maguire—they're all on a list of a, an archetype of a player that we want. All different values, all different characteristics. 
But what Maguire would bring is someone who's very, very... I mean, he's the best in the league, in the air. He, he just wins things. There's there's a skittishness to him. He's not a perfect thing. He's not like this Rolls-Royce centre-half like a real Ferdinand was back in the day. But he's levels better, certainly in the air at least, than anything that we've got. And because he's a ball-playing centre-half as well, that gives you options. It doesn't mean you can target Lindelof too much. You know, you've seen how Smolin almost dislocates his hip just trying to pass a simple ball. That's gone. And then you have a stronger back four looking. And I think... To be honest, I think Shaw becomes a weak link in the defence after that, if you've upgraded. Which isn't a bad weak link. It's not really, no, he's, he's not terrible, and people are probably going to take that the wrong way, because that's what the internet likes to do. But I think that he probably is the weakest link in that chain then, um, which is not a terrible... He was player of the season <laughs> last year. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but... Yeah, um, so I think it's definitely an upgrade, and it's definitely an upgrade that's needed. Would I like to see him? Yeah, I would, because I, I like what he's probably going to bring to us. Worth the money? No, nobody is. But this is the game. You, you've got to play. Look, you can't take a player out of another Premier League side. It's mental to think that. Everyone's earning so much money that they're like, what, why are we going to sell him to you? What would intrigue me, though? I'd love to have been a fly on the wall. Just knowing how Brendan Rodgers is. When he goes in and asks him. Probably pulled an envelope out and was like, your name was in this envelope all along. Right. I mean, he's one of them. <laughs> Harry son. What I want to say. Like, it's just, he's a ball bag, isn't he? I can imagine the, the shit patter that he come out with about trying to keep him here and all like that. Supposedly, there was a gentleman's agreement where he said, like, if... Uh, if a decent offer comes in for you, we'll let you go. Decent, like the not knock back like seventy million. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seventy million's a decent offer for you. I think that's fair play. Um, it is what it is, isn't it? It's a shame that you know that Van Dyke deal is kind of just shaking everything up with terms of buying a centre half. Everyone seems to think, oh, you've got Van Dyke on your hands. So like, look how Van Dyke did. Now we need this. We can't. And I mean, like you said, I agree with everything. Yes, he's not worth the money. But does he become an instant improvement on what we have? Yes. I do still have a little bit of doubts over him. And I fear that in a year or two, we may be looking at him like we are Phil Jones. No. But I just hope not. And I think, look, he's going to come in. He's a commanding centre-half. He's, he's going to improve. He's going to get better. Hopefully, Manchester United can be the challenge that he needs. And if you bring in a wan and a, and a, a Maguire... Your defence is a lot better. Lindelof was improving as the season went on. If Eric Bailly can can maintain fitness for at least half a season, we've got a decent centre half there. And I even think Chris Smalling and Jones' as backup one of them. isn't bad. Yeah, one, one of them. them. Um, can we break some news? I think we're going to break some news. Someone just told us that Two Hands Abe's gone out on loan this year, yeah. and I'm devoured. I am devoured as well, but I'm not devoured. devastated because I heard loan. I had seen like eight million pound fee and all that earlier this summer, and I shit myself. Yeah, I'd rather he went on loan than we sold him for eight million. Um, we won't say who it was. He did say it looks like Villa again that he's going to be going, which I guess all right. Okay, Premier League. The fans know him. He knows the club. That gives him the best opportunity to do well. Uh, and he's obviously going to have a lot of trade at Villa, so it, it's not a bad thing. But I wanted to see him given an opportunity United. And what's the shame is that I know his agent, and his agent was saying that they wanted a new contract and in for to be considered part of the first team squad or to be sold permanently they didn't want a loan when he got the new contract there must have been some sort of leeway being given like right we get your new contract but you are going on loan again but he's better than Jones and Smalling simple as that I thought he was fantastic last night better than Jones and Smalling I, I agree with you as well and I think even if Ali feels he's not better than Jones and Smalling you've got such a roof your ceiling there of improvement and that freshness and that not having that, them years of failure behind you where you can just push him in and feel like he's a brand new signing, which I think he could become at Manchester United because he's clearly confident on the ball. He's cool, calm, Did composed. You off the ball last night, it was at one point, Jones was chasing someone back. I think he won a tackle. And he told Jones to pass it to Romero. He told Romero to pass it to, to him. He passed it up to, he took one touch, passed it out of his feet, laid it in there for Matic. And then he told Matic to chill on the ball. And then he was like, all right, give it back. And I just think there is nobody, although Scott McTominay, to give him some credit, was actually doing some of that yesterday as well. There's no one that directs traffic like that in that defence. Jones is just like telling himself to breathe in and out so he doesn't die. Smalling's just the way with the fairies. Like, you need that. When we say you need leadership, it's that constant reassurance and stuff. It keeps everything on a level. And that's what Tuan Zabi brings. And I, you know, I'll be gutted to see him go because he's a real guy that I could see growing into a top tier centre half one day. But on the other hand, if he goes and he has a great season and he comes back to United next summer as, as someone that's going to death or you can't deny him that position, happy days. And who knows, he could get an England debut or something playing for Aston Villa in the Premier League. And then that kind of 
knocks so him up in value Rocket's again. It's not been shy in dishing debuts out, has it? So he could do. Mm. Defo. Um, let's talk about some players that may be off um, before we get onto Ali's comments after Jesus. after the game yesterday. Uh, Pogba said, "No need to talk now." I had my confused face on when he said that. <laughs> is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. Um, how have you interpreted that? Because he's been a lot more smiley, yeah, hasn't he? Face, confused face. Well, he has, but is that from he's got his move? some of the <laughs> some of the stuff I was hearing from some of the lads over here in Australia that was at the open training session, he was getting booed quite heavily yesterday. By it was a not even one percent of the crowd. There was like a group of a dozen lads or so that was every time he got the ball and they chilled out after about twenty minutes. They must have got bored, but he was doing my head in. I'm like, lads, you know what I mean? Travel ten thousand miles and he was going to boo him. Um, I don't like some of the comments that he said previously. Maybe saying that there's no need to talk is. If someone's actually had a word with him and saying, stop talking shit to the press. Don't give him anything. If you're going, go. But you don't need to be honey dicking everyone in the, in the media all the time. There's no need for it. Um, so no need to talk. I completely agree there's no need to talk. What does it mean? The fuck knows. Nobody knows what it means. No, Provocative. No idea. Gets people going. Joe, it wouldn't shock me if he stayed and it wouldn't shock me if he went. I think I think we'll kind of see what Ronnie did um, after 08. Yeah, give us right. another year. Right. Except he hasn't won the Champions League. Yet. But if someone gets disqualified and UEFA completely change their rules and we somehow get lucky, maybe. Could be on. Champions League winners 2020. Um, <laughs> Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said something which um, reminded me of a Jose Mourinho quote. He said, speak to Ed um, when asked about transfers now. I don't know whether that's he's just fed up of talking about it. You and ever have a fucking row with your missus, right? And then someone asks something, you go, ever. fucking ask her, right? <laughs> what does that tell you? Tells you everything now, He's it? had an argument with his, his missus. No, he's had an argument with Ed. Yeah. Talk to him. I don't know. Mm. He's clearly got plans. I've clearly got plans. Fucking talk to him. That's what it felt like to me. Um, and yeah, it seems eerily reminiscent of what Jose had last year. We will see. It's a, it's it's a weird one with Ed Woodward because it, it was here. Not it, even Ed Woodward. It was in Australia. It was in Australia when he disappeared on urgent transfer yeah, business. You think he's going to do it again? He's not actually been seen in public since, has he? Oh no, he had a. He was on crutches when at the Carabao thing the other day. Wasn't he in Australia when he said we can do things no other club can? No, that was on a phone call. No, no, no. He, there was an interview on MUTV when oh, he said it? that. Was it here? That was in America, I think. He definitely anyway, done us over. Ollie, it's not Ed that does it. That's why it's all gone wrong. You give the list of the wrong guy. It's Matt Judge that does all this. He's the chief negotiator. And he is the worst judge of anyone good because he doesn't do anything. Well, he does do some stuff. It's maybe not good enough. Polish the worry I've got, man, is that Ollie wanted clearly wanted everything done by the first of July. That was two weeks ago, right? Then we came to Australia. Now, it doesn't feel like stuff gets done in the middle of a tour, although it looks like Rom could be going to Inter Milan. And can we get that done before we play them? Because that's going to be double weird, isn't it? Or is he just going to be working in the gym again? Um, it doesn't feel like you're going to get anything done on the tour. Then you get back. You've basically got AC Milan then on the 3rd of August after the game in Norway. No time to do anything then. By the way, and how much is it to get to Norway? Well, dear. 800 quid for a flight. Near about an hour over the road. Well, not far off what, how much it costs to go here and Singapore. Someone sort us out of flight, please. Um, talking about Romelu Lukaku, the Inter CEO, Marotta something, Italian name, um, <laughs> he says he's confident he'll fulfil his manager's wishes in bringing a player to the club. Um, do you think they've been told a little something by Lukaku, his agent, um, United? Do you, think, do you think his injury is not actually an injury? Because Martial was also not training with him yeah. at the time. I think there's there's more than meets the eye with him, I think, at the moment. I think he's playing the game. But I know there was a couple of lads that stayed behind at Carrington um, that you would expect to go off. Fred's not one of them, although he has stayed behind. I don't actually know what the situation is. Do you know what happened with Fred? No. Fred thought he'd be in the Copper America, right. so he arranged his wedding for now. And then he wasn't in the Copper America, he's still getting married. How about bring your wedding forward or tell him, bruv, it's work time. You've had all summer to sort this out. Anyway. I know that he stayed behind to do some training. Um, Damien's there as well. And there are a couple of lads from the under-23s who... Um, I don't know the future of, like... I I chat to Nishan quite a lot, Nishan Burkhardt, and I think he's going to be going. I get, 
I don't get why he's not gone on the tour unless he's injured. Um, Cameron Balfour Jackson I spoke to last week when we was doing the Pro Evo thing. He said he's expecting to go out on loan. I think it came out last night that Hiram Veen have asked him to go on trial. So he might he might get a permanent deal. Um, I'm not sure it's going to happen for him at United. It's a real weird circumstance if everything happened with Balfour Jackson. Because mm. under Louis van Gaal for a period he looked incredible. And there's obviously some things that aren't out there that yeah, happen I'm, at a time. I'm not talking about yeah, those. Yeah, but <laughs> there's a lot of different yeah. factors that are non-footballing factors yeah, yeah, that have yeah, yeah. contributed to his yeah, just, his right. dropping down the pecking order. So yeah. it's a shame that that happens, but that's what happens with younger players. And that's why it's important for like, like so Tahith Chung, Angel Gomez, Mason Greenwood, take your chance. We said it at the start of the video, Marcus Rashi Rashford, takes no his one, chance. No one took the chance as, as well as Marcus Rashford ever did, ever. He took his chance phenomenally. Um, and you've got to go and do it like that. Otherwise, you can just end up disappearing, play one, two games and you're gone because it's an absolute cutthroat at the top, isn't it, at United? And there's been there's been better players than Marcus come through the academy and just disappeared off the face of the earth. I was really worried for Angel, to be honest. Angel's one of the best players I've ever seen in terms of pure technique and ability on the ball. Off the ball, there is still question marks, but... If he'd have come through, like if he was doing what Foden was doing now, he'd be getting more game time, probably getting and deserving more game time than Foden because he's a, he's a far better if footballer. they're coming through in success as well, it's more easy. But that's it. But the sort of football that City play where they're going to have 60-70% possession all the time, Angel Gomez would be blowing people's minds with what he can do in a 50-50 game, a counter-attacking team. I'm not sure it suits him. Mm. Difficult. You've got to take your chances, boys. Make sure you do it. Um, prediction out of 10. Maguire to United, is it happening? Eight. Lukaku to Inter, is it happening? Nine. It's happening? I think so. Pogba to Real Madrid this summer? Or Juventus? Three. Next summer? Six. That's, that's fair. I would have gave it more for next summer. You don't know what's going to happen. You have no idea what's going to happen. Right, we win the league and then he wants to stay in. I don't think we're going to win the league, like. But you know, Real Madrid have spent about half a billion. They could be getting all sorts of shit, getting slung their way with bans and things next year. Although I'm sure they'll find a way around it, like PSG did. Um, nah, I just Raul being his agents a, a big red flag in it that he's probably going to move again at some point. But I don't know. I, I think United are in a position where we don't need to sell him this summer. There might be a little more pressure next summer, but then. United can United can refuse. And I think if they've grown a pair of bollocks, they might as well keep them. It's funny though, because I think if he wasn't as commercially viable as he is, Edward would already sell him. Maybe. Um, he's probably right. Which shows you where we are as a football club. Anyway, guys, we'll keep you updated with more from Australia. So make sure you're keeping it locked. We'll have fan cams after the game from Leeds. We'll have a vlog from all of that stuff as well. And then we're heading to Singapore. So keep it locked for all of that. Follow us on Instagram at Full Time Devils. Make sure you're subscribing and following him on everything that he does, Mr. Stephen Housen and all that. And yeah, keep it locked. Any final words? Don't say them too there. Be nice to people. Be nice.